Welcome RC Hacker, Mark here. Today we're going to look at this 315 megahertz transmitter and receiver unit. They're very simple, they're very cheap. You can get them on, on um, eBay and DX.com and bangsuper.com and all that sort of stuff. Uh, there, this one cost me about $6 or something. Now you've got a little transmitter unit with four buttons and inside there's a little 12 volt battery and a receiver unit as well. Four buttons, four channels, four binary channels, which means it's just basically on and off. Now what we'll do, I'll have a closer look on the bench at this and I'll put links to the data sheets and all that sort of thing below so you can have a look at those. I'll quickly show you how to hook one of these up to an Arduino and I'll show you some very basic code to go with that. And we'll do a bit of a range test and see how much range we get out of this. See how much range we get out of this with just the um, basic antennas on here. So, um, oh, the operation of these, all you gotta do, you just start uh, press the button. All right, just kidding. Now this is the receive module and there's not a lot to it. There's this um, decoding chip. Uh, I'll, I'll put the, the um, data sheet in the links below. Um, on the other side here, you can, you can bridge these little uh, connections here. I'm not sure if you bridge the top one or the bottom one. Um, yeah, it looks like it's got low and high, but you can just put little solder blobs on there to sort of change the, uh, the channel of, of this. So um, on the transmitter, there's corresponding bits that you can solder to actually change it. So then you can operate more than one of these and sort of make them semi-secure. Now, as for the pins, we've got four data pins, one, two, three, four, and then there's a ground pin and VCC. This VT, I'm not sure what that one is. I didn't need it to get this working. And here's our basic um, RF bits, our antenna. You don't want to touch this. This uh, tunes the module, I'd say, and so does that. The reason why that's all gunked up. And um, on the back, there is, this is an op amp, a couple of transistors. I, I presume this is just the radio sort of side of thing. Yeah, so that's our receiver module. I've been powering this off uh, five volts and I've also got this to work at 3.3 volts as well. Uh, I guess look at the data sheet to actually see exactly um, what voltage range this can work off, work off, but I wouldn't put any more than five volts into it. Certainly it's the receiver, so that's not re really necessary. Now, the transmitter module, um, this is the package that mine came in, this nice little uh, unit with a telescopic antenna, and it's got one screw on the back, which I've already taken out, and we can just pull it apart like so. And here's the guts for it. There's an encoding chip with the corresponding um, pads that you can solder and desolder to make separate channels. And then we've just got the four buttons and the battery here. It's, this is a 12 volts 27A battery. God, I don't even know if I can get new ones of those here. Now, all this testing I've been doing, uh, this is currently measuring about 10 volts. And then we've got our RF side here, it doesn't look like there's there's a lot. Um, what's that? That's a saw filter, perhaps? I'm not 100% sure, but the, the RF side of it is certainly very, very simple. And simple LED to tell you when you've turned it on and off. Right, let's um, put, it, put these on the power supply and see how much current they draw. Okay, a very quick and dirty setup here. I've got uh, 12 volts, which is powering the transmitter module, which is sitting down here. Currently it's drawing nothing at all because I'm not pressing any buttons, so I don't think it actually does anything until you press the buttons. The receiver module here is uh, on 5 volts, and it must be drawing something, but it's such a small amount that it doesn't register on this um, power supply at all. Now the multimeter here is hooked up to one of the output pins, on the receiver here and our RF Explorer is here on about 300 to 335 megahertz so we can see the result when we press the button. And when we press the button we get 5 volts on our output bin and we're drawing about 10 milliamps on, on our um, 
with our transmitter. Now the response there, it's pretty quick. I'm gonna go on, off, on, off. Probably the slowest thing in this loop is probably the multimeter anyway. Um, you can see it's pretty rapid update there on the uh, RF Explorer. Right, let's move on and we'll have a look at the Arduino. Okay, now this is my little Arduino setup. I'm not using an actual genuine Arduino. This is a clone, but you know, any Arduino, you'll be able to do this. What I've done, I've plugged the receiver here, the four pins on the end, I'll plug them straight into analog five, analog four, analog three, and analog two. And then I've hooked up VCC and ground here to um, obviously ground, and then V in here. Um, you'd probably, strictly speaking, you should probably hook this up to um, five volts on the Arduino, because if you use the V in and it, you've hooked up power here, external power like nine volts, and you'll be putting nine volts into your receiver, and I'm not sure if it'll handle that. But for this case here, I've just hooked it up like that. And I've got a servo hooked up here as well. Um, I've just plugged it straight into the board here. I'm not sure how this board works, whether the power rail is associated with the power here or not, or whether it's five volts and it's regulated, but on a stock Arduino, probably not a good idea to hook a, a servo directly to it and power it off the Arduino. You might draw a bit too much current and um, cause a brownout with the Arduino. But in this case, for demo purposes, it works. And I'll just show, show you it working. Um, basically, I'll just push a button and it will go to a set position there. So I've just programmed four different uh, positions in there and I press a button and that servo goes to that position. Now, what you can do, you know, I'll leave it up to you what you can actually do with this. Um, you could hook this receiver up to the KK2 and then run Arduino on the KK2. If you have a look at one of my previous videos, there's a way to do that. And then you take advantage of all the screen and all the other sensors on board. Um, yeah, so that's just a very, very basic example of a very simple radio controlled Arduino. Now, I'll show you the code. Uh, the code's very simple. We're using the servo library which comes with Arduino, and then we declare a servo, my servo, a really original name there. Um, in our setup routine, we've just got my servo.attach9, so our servos, the signal for the servo is on pin 9, and then we're setting the pin modes on a, on, um, that are attached to our receiver to inputs here, so pin mode input for A5, A4, A3, and A2. And then in the main loop, all we're doing that if we get a digital read on A5, then we my servo write to position zero. So if um, A5 is high, then we write to position zero. If A4 is active, then we write position 60. If A3 is active, position 120. And if A2 is active, position 180. Now, the zero to 180 is just the way that this servo library works. I think there are other options to say like write PWM and then the exact, um, you know, like from 0 to 200, 2000 milliseconds or something like that. And then down the below, just a delay here so it doesn't hog too many CPU cycles. Um, and yeah, that's very, very basic just to get this little system work. Right, let's move on and we'll do a range test. All right, now for this range test, uh, rather than the servo, I've hooked this up. This is something else that I'm testing. I'm actually gonna use this um, little control unit in a camera project. So I want, I want a screen and I want this to be able to do my um, time lapses and stuff and control multiple cameras via infrared. And then I wanna be able to remotely press it as well. And it's gonna be hooked up to a star tracker as well. So it'll drive the stepper motor that drives the star tracker, tracker so I can do some nice long exposures of stars and stuff. Um, if you're interested in that sort of thing, I do some of my star time lapses on my other channel. But uh, basically, now I've set it up, so if I press one button, hang on, 
forgot to plug that in there so I'll just plug that in there so now if I if I press this you can see it says one there two there three there and four there and then just, and a little behavior that I noticed if I press two buttons you know I get one and two obviously but if I press one button and then the other one and both are pressed but only one is being shown um, so there's a little bit of I don't know what you call it a bit of latching a bit of delay here but if you want to do a two button there's a bit of um, it's it feels really good like the code here is basically just outputting straight away what's on the pin so that's not holding it or latching it in the code what's doing the latching is in this remote control bit so if I press it there one two I can do two and three and I can do two three four and I can even do four all at once and if I lift up all my buttons except one all those four stay active until they're all released and then it resets um, that behavior is actually quite handy because you you'll find you won't need to do uh, fancy debouncing code um, to handle multiple button presses you, you can just rely on the fact that that this sort of it, I guess it sort of does a bit of latching and a bit of debouncing on the button press in here now I'm gonna have a little user interface in here so I can select various settings and stuff so that's going to be very very useful yeah a bit off topic off topic um, if people want to see more of this project uh, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do but I'm still working on it I'm just going to put the hardware together and then I'll be writing the software at a later date anyway let's see what range we can get out of this little baby okay so here's my setup for the range test now I learned a couple of things as I was setting this up and I, I did a couple of dry runs beforehand now I learned that the laptop puts out a bit of noise on the 315 megahertz range so I've taken the laptop out of the equation and put this on a battery power supply now instead and I also learned that the receiver itself makes quite a lot of noise so uh, what I'll do I'll we'll plug in the um, Everything's powered up except the actual receiver. So I'll just power up the receiver now while it's still on the Arduino board. And you can see that noise there went up from the RF Explorer. And uh, I don't know if we'll be able to see this. So as I move towards the antenna there, sorry about all the reflections, you can see that noise jump right up there on the RF Explorer. Anyway, we'll get on with the range test. Um, so laptop and the receiver itself actually produce a bit of, bit of noise. Now I've got the, uh, I've got the remote and I've hooked up this three cell battery. It's charged to 12 volts because my little battery is flat, it's only outputting about 10 now. So let's go and do this range test. We're not going too far. One, two, three, four, that's about 10 meters. Now, my first test with the stock antenna on the receiver I got this far. This was how far I got. And, you know, we're only 20 metres away, 25 metres, and that was as far as I got. Um, and then I, I put a very basic V antenna on the receiver, and I'll show you that, I'll show you another clip. But one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's down there about somewhere. One, two, three, four. Right, there's a bit of traffic noise here. One, two, three, four. Oh, 
So that's our that's our property there. One, two, three, four. Apologies. We've lost reception at this stage. Keep in mind there's all that bamboo and a couple of signs in between me and the shed now. All right, let's say about 150 metres. One. Now two, it looks like I'm getting a partial signal now. It's just three, that the LCD doesn't quite have enough time to draw the entire number before the signal cuts out again. All right, it's about 200 metres. One, again, a partial signal, two, a little better than last time, but it's probably three, just due to the extra height that I've gained. Four. And 200 metres is what the specs say it should be able to do. So I'm going to leave it at that. So not bad, but still fairly useful, but not as good as what I was expecting. Of course, in uh, clear air, you'll get a much better range than this with good antennas and that sort of thing. You know, you might be able to get 500 metres or so. Okay, so I'll show you quickly some of the stuff that's available online and this is this is the one that's closest to the one that I've got I actually bought mine about a year ago um, the remote unit here is a lot uglier but well, I don't know if that's smaller or just shorter and fatter or what but they're only six dollars fifty uh, you can see the antenna the Volt antenna is coiled up here. That's probably intentional as well. I didn't try doing that. I think I stretched my antenna out and found that that didn't work. So maybe I should go back and coil it up and try it again to get best reception. But what I was getting was good enough already. It was good enough for me for what I want to do with it. Uh, there's other ones. You can see the same receiver module here. But it's got an additional board and relays as well. So you could hook that up to a hook this one up to a greater variety of um, objects and things like that and another bigger one here I'm not sure if that is the same chipset in there I dare say it would be we've got the same same fob there as well and then even on eBay, there's lots and lots of options. A lot of these ones with the relays as well now. So um, finding the super simple one, which we, we were using, is um, a bit more difficult these days. And they are also in 433 megahertz as well. There are 433 megahertz versions of this, but for us, anyone who's going to be using any sort of open LRS system, you don't want to afford a 433 megahertz system. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Please uh, click like down below and tell your friends and that sort of thing. If anyone finds any better links to this, this um, th these type of modules, please um, throw them in the comments below. And generally stuff with links in it gets marked as spam by default by YouTube and then I've got to sort of unspam it so be patient there there's not much I can do about that um, also if you have any other ideas as to what you can actually do with one of these with one of these little transmitter and receiver units and the Arduino on board your model aircraft it's a good little auxiliary system which maybe you could have say a second person with a second camera on your model and they could use these buttons just to control what viewpoint they have you know maybe the camera's on a little um, servo or something like that but they're certainly very cheap and I guess if you put decent antennas on them like these are just very basic antennas like a bit of wire and this little stick thing that came with it I guess you could get a lot more range out of them as well now another thing I want to mention is I'm going to start putting together an Arduino playlist which has just got Arduino stuff in it so this one is in there I've done another video where I put the Arduino code onto the KK2 and I think the Vario was an Arduino project as well and that big printer that I converted into a servo. So I'm building a, an Arduino playlist so check that out below, I'll put a link there and thanks again for watching, I will catch you next time. Cheers. Okay so we'll press any key, 
First test is the buttons test. Now, 